And you're welcome back. The African Union is worried that a hunger pandemic may hit many of its member countries if steps are not taken to build food sovereignty. Data indicates that Africa has the potential to feed 9 billion people in the world by 2050, far more than the current world population. Hence the need to cut down the high import bill of food importation, which currently stands at some 84 billion US dollars for the period of 2020 to 2022 alone. Speaking at the 8th Africa Agribusiness and Science Week underway in South Africa, the AU Commissioner for Agriculture, Josefa Lionel Sacco, called on the continent to level uh, and uh, also leverage on the science and technology innovation to address the looming challenge facing the continent. Chairperson of the Board of Director of uh, Cardeza, Dr. Yemi Akimbaju Akimbamijo, Executive Director of FARA, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and all protocol duly observe. I bring you warm uh, greetings from His Excellency Musa Faki Mohammed, the chairperson of the African Union Commission. And I thank the FARA for inviting me to speak on behalf of the African Union at the opening ceremony of the African Agribusiness and Science Week event holding in this beautiful city of Durban, South Africa. This event could not have come at a better time as the world in, is in the midst of a hunger pandemic caused by several cascading that we all know, uh, factors often refer as the three C's, I will even say four C's, because we have conflict, COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, uh, climate change, three C's rather, climate change. Africa needs to be better prepared as we cannot be reacting from one crisis to another. So we need to really leverage our science potential and invest on scientific institution, the African scientific institution. We know that uh, the minister, ministers uh, of agriculture of our, in our continent have their national uh, research institutions. And these national research institutions are collapsing. We should not allow it because we have scientists and we have our own knowledge. So let us build upon science. Let us support science. Without science, we will not transform this agriculture. So this is like building a house without foundation. So science, it is a priority for Africa. And African youth should be engaged in this type of uh, 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 journey so that we can transform. Because statistics was given here, and uh, it, we are not proud to say that any time the report comes out, Africa is always behind. When Africa has the best lands, the best, the, the, you know, the youngest population, we have rivers, we have, we have uh, uh, rivers, we have coastal countries, 38 countries in Africa, coastals. So let us unlock, unlock the potential we have and start going out of these reports that come from FAO, from this, Africa is always behind with uh, the issue of uh, malnutrition and, on, uh, and uh, food insecurity. Food insecurity should not be a problem in Africa. We should feed Africans, and we also should feed the world. So let us build capacity of the existing institution we have in Africa. In African Union, we have our own specialized technical uh, uh, offices that deal with different issues. I'm talking about my department. We have AU IBER, we have uh, IPEX, IPEX, we have SAFGRAD, we have PAMVAC. PANVAC is one of the, the institutions of African Union that eradicated one of the past. We are now working on trying to eradicate le petit ruminant. So the question still remains, how can Africa remain resilient in all of these crises, including uh, the global economic meltdown? I want to bring in now uh, Busi Mabuza, who is the chairperson of BRICS Business Council in South Africa. Thank you uh, for spending some time with us here on Joy News in Ghana. Already the international... Uh, organizations such as the UNDP are alarmed that Africa is facing a double tragedy as they're describing it, COVID-19 and the recent being the Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, how, uh, in your estimation, can we find adequate funding to avert what's likely to be the third possible pandemic, a hunger crisis facing Africa? 
plus the funding will come. I was very excited with the conversations that we were holding in Durban, focusing on the common African agro parks, because all of a sudden you're talking about um, opportunities of scale, opportunities of size, where the production can be led in a scientific manner, where the agri-technology can be implemented on a farm or a land piece of scale and size that would make sense for investors to come. There are examples, um, uh, blessed, for example, in India, where um, India now exports food to the rest of the world. In fact, they are amongst the top 10 countries that export food. And there they have agri-parks that have been able to att attract investment repeatedly. Last year, they announced a over $2 billion of investment in their agri-parks. I believe this is the way that the African continent should be going. Through our energy behind the agri-parks, they make sense in terms of the African continental uh, free trade area. They make sense in terms of production at scale, giving support to those who are producing. And in fact, eventually locating agro-processing uh, plants at those agro-parks mm. will be very possible. Right. Uh, but even as we speak, uh, there's an alarming rate of uh, the import bill for the whole of Africa, which is about some $80 billion uh, per year. That was between 2015 and uh, 2017. Uh, but even as we speak now, that amount has shot up. So uh, the question is, how do we remain resilient and what do you feel is accounting for this dependence on uh, the high level of imports? So it's absolutely tragic that we are where we are because there are exogenous factors now, such as climate change, which has hit especially the east, eastern parts of the African continent. We've seen some devastating floods affecting those areas. However, there are opportunities for us to collaborate with other countries which are facing similar challenges and share knowledge on how they have been able to build resilience in their own um, farming initiatives. But the second uh, issue is that if we diversify uh, through value chain farming, our produce in the different countries, then we will be able to amass the opportunity and make sure that it makes sense uh, to the continent will be able to access much larger markets because we will be producing at scale. I am concerned also that where we are producing uh, in the continent, normally we export outside of the continent. So the intra-Africa trade is a huge, huge opportunity for us and it will lead to um, food security. The regional value chains that will be able to enhance in that um, endeavor will actually shield us from the global supply chains that we saw closing so tightly and so quickly when we had the COVID um, lockdowns in the rest of the world. So it's important that we start looking at regional value chains, make sure that uh, we build self-sufficiency into those regional value chains. And even as we speak, uh, the African Union admits the fact that we need to build resilience and uh, to put in more investments. And that's why we're focusing on, for instance, the Africa continental free trade area. Such an initiative has been identified as a tool uh, which could make the con uh, continent uh, much more sufficient by pushing intra-Africa trade. But it appears that this framework is not taking shape as expected. Um, do, do you share the same view that, that the after framework is not working as expected. I'm very excited about the opportunity that the African continental free trade area presents. And what I've observed um, is that business and the population at large is actually looking at this as an opportunity for the continent um, to start trading amongst each other, to start investing into each other's regions for the benefit of the continent. Of course, the policymakers can be a, sometimes a little myopic and look at the opportunities that may be lost for their countries. But what I would say to the policymakers is that 
that interruption may be there, but it will be short term. In the long term, the pie will be much bigger if we implement the African continental free trade area um, as, as we should. So I'm very excited about the opportunity. And I'm actually even more excited that we are now seeing conversations amongst business. At um, the conference in Durban, we had development finance institutions, we had business leaders, and we had policymakers putting their heads together to make sure that we start implementing the African continental free trade area. Uh, I see. Uh, but then we cannot be flippant about what's happening in the world right now, the geopolitics, the tension, uh, the latest being the escalation of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. It's also having a, a negative on uh, Africa's food security because supply chains are being cut. Uh, for you in the business community, of course, you belong to the BRICS uh, business community in South Africa. How are you of finding a way around these hurdles just to contribute to your quarter and ensuring that we avert this hunger crisis that is looming. So, and we found that there were businesses in South Africa, for example, and I'm sure it's true for the rest of the continent. There are businesses that have partners in the Ukraine. There are businesses that have partners in Russia. And um, so the human, humanitarian aspects of this war are absolutely something that we should all be speaking out on. And I was very happy to see that there was a delegation of Af African leaders that were sent to go and make representations both in the Ukraine and Russia to see how we can quickly get uh, this war stopped. Because it's not just affecting those two countries, it's affecting the rest of the world as well. However, in this crisis, we as the African continent are now talking about the opportunity that this can uh, present. Fertilizer, for example, um, the raw material for fertilizers come mainly from the African continent, yet we are a net importer as a continent of fertilizers. Mm. Perhaps we need to start looking at putting plants in the continent that will provide us with the necessary um, fertilizers. Right. So I think the conversations have been very supportive of us collaborating to ensure that shocks in the future are not as devastating for the continent. Mm. However, we are human, so we are also mindful of the humanitarian aspects. Indeed. And we hope that the politicians will attend to that. Uh, and I belong to that class of the youthful population, very much concerned about what will happen in the future at the continent having to feed nine billion people uh, in the world by 2050, far more than the population of the world. Uh, aside food security, uh, there's some other factors that we can uh, start working on now. Population control has come up in the conversation. Is that something you would opt for? Look, uh, the best form of population control is education. We have a youthful um, continent that is very aspirational aspirational, very well educated. And the population growth in the African continent, I think it's below 2.5% 2, 2 at the moment. If GDP in the continent continues to grow at the rate that we saw pre-COVID pre and at the rates that we're seeing in some of uh, the lead countries, such as uh, Ghana, of course, and Rwanda, <laughs> then I think we will begin to address the problems. I see. Uh, but until that happens, we'll have to leave the conversation here for now. Grateful, uh, Busi Mabuza, for joining us uh, on Africa Connect. We're grateful.